In this section, we're going to talk about prorations. Now, before we get into any math examples on this, let's just talk about what a proration actually is. Whenever a real estate closing takes place, you're going to have a particular day where that closing takes place. That's called the day of closing. For argument's sake, let's say that the day of closing is May 15th. Pretend that that's a little fence and put your closing date up top. Now what you've got to figure out is what is it that you're actually prorating and what is the total time period? And here are just some examples of prorations. You could have rent, you could have real estate taxes, you could have something like homeowners association fees, maybe something simple like pool maintenance, all of these things that are paid by one party or the other for the month or for the year somehow need to be accounted for at closing. So let's take a simple one like pool maintenance. And let's say that that pool maintenance is paid on the first of the month for the entire month. It's paid in advance. On the first of the month, in this case the first of May, the seller paid the pool company X amount of money, whatever that is. And they paid for the entire month, which ends on May 31st. Typically with the proration, the question will tell you who gets charged for or credited for the day of closing. So in this case, let's say that the day of closing belongs to the seller. What that means is April, I'm sorry, May 15th will fall on the seller's side, which means May 16th will be the first day for the buyer. We know in this month, the month of May, that there are a total of 31 days. Now what we have to prorate or figure out is who gets credit for what? Well, if the seller paid the pool maintenance on the first, they paid for 31 days, but they only lived there for 15 days. So what happens is, at closing, the buyer will need to reimburse the seller for that portion that the seller has already paid for, but not used. So in this case, the buyer will be charged for these days, a charge is going to be a debit, and that money will go to the seller, that would be a credit. The formula for solving this, let's just say for argument's sake that the amount of money that was paid for pool maintenance here was $100, the formula is going to be your number of days, times the amount, divided by total days, which in this case is 31. So to calculate this, you would simply take the number of days on the buyer's side, which is 16, times $100, and divide that by 31 days, and your answer is going to be whatever that number comes to, we're not gonna calculate it right now, but whatever that comes to, that would be a debit to the buyer, because the buyer will be charged that amount, and a credit to the seller. Now, you should know this and understand this before you get a proration question. So let's go to an actual question and see how this works. So now let's go and do a real question with a proration. In this question it says that the investor purchased a duplex that was rented for $475 per month. The closing will be on March 19th with the day of closing belonging to the buyer. What is the amount of the proration and how will it be entered on the closing statement? Well, if you take a look at this is the month of March. I'm just going to draw a little timeline for March. March starts on the 1st, and March ends on the 31st. Day of closing is March 19th. You're told in the question that that goes to the buyer's side, which means the last day for the seller was March 18th. So if you look at this just, just visually, the seller has got 18 days, which means the buyer has got 13 days in the month of March since there are 31 days. But what happened here? What happened is on the first of the month, the seller collected $475. But they're not entitled to that for the entire month. They're only entitled up until the day of closing, or in this case, the day before closing. So the seller is entitled to 18 days, but the seller collected rent for the full 31 days. So what happens at closing? Well, at closing, the seller is going to be charged for the 13 days that they owe the buyer, and the buyer will be credited. So when we look at it, the seller will be debited, the buyer will be credited. Well, if you just look at these answers, answer A says debit seller, so that could be possible. Answer B says debit buyer, so that is impossible, cannot pick that. Answer C says debit buyer, that can't be correct. And answer D says debit seller, which again, could be correct. So if you're just guessing at this, you're gonna either guess A or D, just by knowing who gets the debit and who gets the credit. When we know we're gonna debit the seller, we're gonna credit the buyer, well, let's again look just visually at this timeline. There are 31 days in the month. The seller collected for the full month 
and is entitled to 18 days, which they've already got, but they've got to give the buyer the money for the 13 days. So if you look at these two numbers, you've got approximately $200 and approximately $400 here. And the question is, which is the larger amount? Well, the larger amount is over here. That's what the seller collected and was entitled to. The smaller amount is what they collected, but they're not entitled to, and they have to give to the buyer. So the answer here is going to be A, which says debit the seller, credit the buyer, 199.19. Let's take a little closer look at that. As we said, we've drew the timeline. There's your day of closing up top. It goes over to the buyer's side, which means the last day for the seller is the 18th. We calculated that was 18 days, which means over on the buyer's side, we've got 13 days. Total of 31 days in the month. Plugging this into our formula, the number of days, which in this case will be 13, times the rent, which was given to you in the question, divided by 31. So plug the numbers in, 13 times 475 divided by 31, and the seller will be debited 199.19, which of course is a credit to the buyer. Debit to the seller, credit to the buyer on the closing statement. Let's do one more proration. This one says property taxes for the year are $840. Now, as soon as you see property taxes, you should be thinking a couple things. Number one, property taxes are not paid in advance like the rent was. Property taxes are paid in arrears. Also, whereas the rent was based on one month in the previous question, property taxes are based on the entire calendar year. Let's go a little further. It says the closing day or day of closing is July 16th. And it says the day of closing belongs to the seller. Using a 365 day year, so don't worry about leap years and all those kind of things, which is the correct entry on the closing statement. Let's take a look here. We say it's gonna be a debit to the seller for 453.37, but let's look and find out why. Again, we draw our timeline. In this case, we've got the day of closing, which is uh, going to go over to the seller side, July 16th. If we add those days up, January, February, March, April, May, June, and July up to the 16th, we will get 197 days. Total number of days in the year is 365. Again, the formula is the number of days times the amount of the taxes divided by 365. In this case, 197 times $840 divided by 365 gives us $453.37. Now the question is who is paying and who is receiving? Well, since the taxes are paid in arrears, as of the closing date, the seller has not yet paid the taxes. When the bill comes, usually in November, the buyer is going to be responsible for the entire bill. So in this case, what's going to happen is at closing, the seller will pay the buyer for the, their portion of the taxes, which again won't be due until November. But when the bill comes, the buyer will pay the entire bill. Obviously, they've already collected the money from the seller, plus their own share, but they will pay the entire bill. So in this case, we are going to debit the seller $453.37 and credit the buyer the same amount, $453.37. Just a word of caution on these on exams. Be careful of any answer where the numbers are different. Debits and credits must always equal. In other words, if I pay you $200, you receive $200. You don't receive a different amount. And that is our discussion on prorations.